what do you get when you cross a know-it-all newspaper columnist with an awkward, unsophisticated everyman? Yeah, uh, well, I'm just not sure about that right now. Welcome to Couch in the Rube. Welcome to Couch in the Rube, presented by Pure Options Precision Crafted Cannabis. Pure Options, where cannabis meets community. Good vibes, good people, good product. If quality means something to you, Pure Options is your place. Visit pureoptions.com. And remember, with a purchase of $50 or more, Couch in the Rube listeners get an eighth of Pro Grow, the Pure Options brand. Just let them know that you found out about them from uh, Couch in the Rube or that we sent you. And even if you don't spend 50 bucks, let them know you heard about uh, them from us. We'd very much appreciate that. Our Wednesday afternoon show brought to you by our friends from Manscaped. That's right. The spring cleaning champions at Manscaped. Do your significant other a favor. Make sure to groom your carpets and drapes with the leaders in below-the-waist grooming. Clear out that winter bush with Manscaped's. Lawnmower 5.0, and watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. Embrace the season. Join 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with their special offer. Go to manscaped.com and use the promo code RUBE, R-U-B-E, for 20% off and free shipping. That's RUBE at manscaped.com, 20% off and free shipping. Jason and I just got the uh, Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Life-changing, man. Feeling fresh, just in time to be in away from my wife for all of March Madness. She's excited. I'm excited. No kidding. Uh, it, it is an awesome product. Um, you know, first experience with it. Uh, good reviews, man. Good reviews. And also, our Wednesday show is always presented by our friends at Front Forty Three and Casking Company, uh, just north of Frandor on East Saginaw and Lansing near the Lansing East Lansing border. If you're dealing with all the traffic mess over there uh, near Harrison Road and want to just get away from it. You know where there's not? It's not too bad. Front Forty Three and Casking Company. They've had construction over there in the past. Now it's not their time. It's such a better scenario over there. Um, great place to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Two distinct vibes and, and, and one uh, uh, one menu and, and, and great drink selection. Also, a great place to watch all of March Madness. Jason, how you doing, brother? Writing right up into my uh, rectum, and it was painful. Hey, man. Yeah, a lot of lot to unpack there. Yeah. <laughs> So are you're you welcome. a little lighter now that you have less hair? I mean, yeah, I had to shave my armpits because mine were getting too, like I had a uh, yeah. buckwheat and a headlock kind of vibe. So thank you, Manscaped, for helping me out with that. There's no doubt. Like, I, I thought I had to change my dietary habits. Turns out, nope, 12 pounds, gone like that. Thank you, Manscaped. So there we are. That's uh, that's the way, Manscaped.com right and, 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 and Rube um, is the promo code for, for 20% off and free shipping. Uh, good show today, I hope. We will... Um, we're going to talk to Rick Carter, uh, who was uh, who before, loves Tom Izzo. He does, and 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 loves Michigan State basketball. And so I'll be curious to see. He was a coach at Michigan State as a graduate manager, kind of cut his teeth under Izzo. Then then was an assistant coach a lot of places um, in, in, in Division One. Still follows Michigan State closely. What they're doing on the court, how they're handling things. I'm very curious for his analysis. Uh, some real basketball analysis on what going on with that program and 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 that team and, and what he thinks so we'll talk to him um in a little bit and then and later on we'll, we'll, we'll talk some lions just sort of in, in some nfl some of the stuff that's happening around uh with who they're signing and, and other signings that have been sort of interesting uh we'll get into that after we talk to rick um and later this week we may have another show we're hoping to have a twitter question show it sort of depends what happens with michigan state basketball the more they win the less likely we'll have a show because their games are right during our usual uh, recording time, uh, but if they lose Thursday, uh, we'll, we'll probably do one Friday. If they lose Friday, we'll, we'll, we're going to try to do one Saturday. So uh, we'll, so is that like a lose-lose for people? I don't understand, you know, like, so if they lose, more that, of us. Yeah. Wait, so, or wait, how does that go? If they win, what do we need to root for? Well, if it, it depends. If people are sick of MSU basketball and like us, well, they're, they're then sick. it's a win-win. Okay. If they like MSU basketball and are lukewarm on us. Mm. Then it's kind of a lose lose. I did listen to uh, Izzo's presser. And your take? Well, I mean, he just does the same old thing and feeds it into you and gets mad at people for doubting them and yada yada. And Lindsey Huddleston 
for some reason asks the first question every single time. So about mental health, yeah, about mental health. Yeah, yeah. is he like the new Hondo or something? <laughs> the Hondo of mental health. Yeah. Um, the uh, keep that edge. But anyway, yeah. So it's I mean it's like forty minutes long. Do you ever want to just get out? Do you ever just talk about things about him or anything? I thought he was a lot better. I, I there was a line he said yesterday in his uh, press conference about you know basically you know we'll, we'll adjust we'll get this going whatever and 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 hopefully it starts this week and what he meant by that though and I took and I talked to Chris Solari about this we he wasn't talking about just this year I I could sense where that conversation had gone and what he'd been talking about he was talking about the the future and he was asked about the future a little bit by Fred Human um and uh I think his his answer was 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 pretty decent he knows what's what um I have a little clip here that I grabbed from it. Okay. It's the reality I got to live with. Am I disappointed? 100%. Am I ticked off? 200%. Am I, am I trying to sell you or me or people out there? 0%. 20%? percent you're trying to sell people? I, I, don't, I, don't, you know? I don't know what he's – he knows – I think he does understand reality. He's, it's classic Izzo, though, right? Yes. So are we just supposed to wait till March and not react to anything? No, no. People should react. I, I do think they should react. I think that people should also remember that these players are people. And look, we do that as much as anything on this show. We, we invite Twitter questions and hot takes. And 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 look, these are in some cases twenty three year old pros. Uh, Malik Hall was interesting yesterday uh, evening, talking with him a little bit. Here, here's a bit of what he said, um, just about the pressure of everything and being comfortable and just sort of how these players think. He said, I don't think any of us are comfortable. I mean, we're not where we expected ourselves to be uh, we, um, or where we think we should be. I don't think anybody's sitting here comfortable just like, okay, uh, with where we are. I think everybody knows we need to be better uh, um, We need better out of ourselves and as a team and as a unit uh, and as individuals going to the Big Ten. And then more on pressure. Uh, I think you could ask anybody that's ever been in the program uh, since uh, Izzo has been coaching, there's always been pressure. Uh, like, like there's. Uh, sorry, I should have edited this better. This came out of my transcription software. Um, <laughs> um, to, like to even say there's not pressure because Izzo was alluding to that wouldn't make sense. I feel like that fits for this program. You can just go online and look. There's pressure like every single day. Either we're not living up to expectations, we're not doing as much as we should be. Uh, not only just externally but internally. Like you can feel a certain pressure uh, to perform here. You have to be at a certain level when you're in this program. You have to play at a certain level when you're here. Like, he was – it was interesting because Izzo earlier alluded to how much his players are in his phones. And, and I would just – you know, I mean, I just remind people that I, these guys do – now, I'm not telling you how to behave because people should behave however they want to behave and whatever they think is appropriate, it's appropriate. But um, the, these guys read what you say. They search their names. They see the criticism. They're not trying to suck, right? That's not <laughs> – Malik Hall doesn't wake up at Indiana and go, man, let's just lose this one. You know, they they are sure that's not that's not. We get that. We get no one wants to lose or be terrible or be ass. But I mean, what else are you going to do after losing four out of five or something like that in weird kind of fashion, right? I mean, I mean the Indiana game you had a chance to win. I don't think Indiana is really that good anyway. And so, of course, you're going to have that. But why are you looking at certain things? Like, I, I can understand by looking, you know, with our show, if I go to YouTube and see someone call, hey, Rube's a fat-headed idiot, I would laugh. But you know what I mean? But all right, so who is it? Is it someone that I know who I care about what they say? I mean, these guys should be so used to this shit now because they're, they're 20-somethings. They've been a part of this social media thing for a long time. That doesn't mean... There's a there's a select few that want them to die. Okay, those people don't matter in anyone's life, so don't make it, you know. So they matter. easier said than done. Like we act like 23 year old pros is full. Like think about yourself at 23 years old. Think about who with money. You would think about you as a 23 year old. I mean, you at 20. What? How old are you when you got the 40 grand and, and drove around in the Jeep? Ah, uh, 30. It's like 29, 30. Okay, yeah. so six, seven years older than these guys. Yeah, you, you didn't exactly. Uh, but but think about being twenty. But when I had that forty k in my in my Jeep, I thought I was the I thought I was fucking invincible. You couldn't say you could say whatever you want on social media to me. I thought I was rich as hell. So I'm just saying, money does help the situation. <laughs> I can understand five years ago when these guys weren't getting shit, they couldn't even ask for a, a sandwich, and they're like, "Wait a minute, what's going on here?" I get that, 
you know. But now that you're getting you're getting broke off, you're getting six figures, five figures, or whatever it is. I mean, just don't. Is it easier said than done? Just don't look at it. Why would why would you want to look at stuff like that? I feel like through a season, you wouldn't even want to. You you have your select people that you would follow and not want to see other things like that because I don't see a lot of the the Michigan State Michigan banter because I just don't follow a lot of those people or if I see it I just go eh so I get it I'm 45 years old I can handle it better maybe now and maybe actually I can't handle it as well as them if someone called me a douchebag or something again if it's funny I, I like it I laugh my ass off but if you're going after someone's family or something like that there's just there's a difference in how you can react to certain things and to tell me that you can't sit there and shut it off I just don't believe that though well these kids struggle with that and and, and I, I just know when I was 23 it would have been a disaster if people had been ripping me on Twitter I would have just come back to them every day <laughs> and sure. it just would have been I mean it would have been unbelievable nice space yeah yeah whatever it would have been would have been awful um it, it will be interesting because whether these this group is actually capable of, of you know, we making want a run. It. The fans want it. With, like I said, we, we've said it how many weeks, Graham? When they play well, it's so much fun to watch. But when they play so poorly, it's just like it just blows your mind of these guys are such great athletes and how they can come together and just put out some – some shit sometimes. Well, the, the, but the Indiana game isn't that. They played a guy who they but lost you're by down sixteen to Indiana. I mean, it was the, it, the start. Flat. The start was shit. But how many times have they come out flat out early? I mean, it's just those times when you're like, oh, here we go again. So it's just frustrating. I, I know I get the frustration. And that, they were a favorite in that game. Well, that's Vegas being stupid. That, and that that's not even Vegas being stupid. That's Ken Palm and predictive metrics. Ve- Vegas has no balls, by the way, anymore. No balls. No. no. Manscaped could not help Vegas. No. Because big bush, Vegas. The, the, Vegas is when it comes to college basketball, they got screwed by doing their own thing and their own numbers, and people bet the Ken Palm numbers against them for a, a full season, and they got taken. And now they look at Ken Palm and they adjust the line by like half a point to act like they came up with their own shit. Nobody in Vegas who's doing college basketball lines should be getting paid because they're not actually doing their own lines. They're just typing Ken Palm numbers into a computer. And the predictive metrics on Michigan State, Indiana were just wrong. They were wrong because Indiana had gotten Xavier Johnson back and been playing a lot better of late. It's assembly hall on a Sunday and all that stuff. That That's fine. But the way Indiana was playing that day in particular and recently, they're playing more like a 4-5-6 seed in the NCAA tournament. On the road, Assembly Hall, you lose by one. You play really well at times. Indiana, to me, is not the problem. If anything, the Indiana game, there is there is there there are moments of promise where you start to say this team could do something because you get the real Tyson Walker back. And he sort of proclaims afterwards, admits he was hurt, that he is back, that he is feeling better. And he scores 30 for the first time and more. And can score 20 in a month. And so that, that was really big. The problem is as everybody sees, is is in, in the interior when you face a really quality big man, is, which you're going to have to maybe with Zach Eady, uh in the second round in, in, of the Big Ten tournament and then certainly um, in the NCAA tournament at some point if you're going to do anything, they've got limited options to do anything about it. And that's just frustrating because it feels like they probably could have done more in this offseason. Now, we'll say this. I – I started to think about this more, and the more I talk to people, I do wonder what was promised to Xavier Booker. And, like, if you get a kid like that, like, you know, what was – to what degree, uh, when you get him, are you saying you're not going to bring in anybody extra? And you've got four big guys. Can you say that anymore in today's college basketball? Well, maybe you can't, but maybe you don't get him otherwise. I don't know. It, it's a good it, – some of the roster development stuff is, is delicate. Those are the conversations that at some point I'd like to have. Uh, with Izzo. But the bottom line is they, they haven't developed the bigs as well as they should have. Jackson Kohler was hurt, so that's not on not on him. But the other guys, I, I do question some of the development that's going on. I do think Sissoko just has a ceiling maybe. But I, I, Coach my team. that's something uh, that's something to uh, to look into. So, um, well, you know what? We'll, we'll ask Rick Carter about that. We'll talk about that with him uh, here in a second. Um, we will take a really quick break. Uh, when we come back, Rick Carter on Michigan State basketball. Couch in the Rube. Presented by Pure Options Precision Crafted Cannabis, Manscaped, of course, and Front 43 and Cask and Company. Hey, sports fans. Are you tired of the same old routine? Looking for a way to unwind after a long day? Look no further than Pure Options, the premier destination for all of your cannabis needs in Lansing, Detroit, Muskegon, and Mount Pleasant. Whether you're cheering for the Lions, Spartans, or the Wolverines, Pure Options has everything you need to elevate your game day experience. And here's the best part. Mention Couch in the Rube when you visit Pure Options and get a free GoPro 8 with a $50 purchase. It's our way of saying thank you for being a loyal listener. 
Swing by Pure Options today and elevate your cannabis experience to a whole new level. Firekeeper's online casino and sports book is the site to play from your phone, tablet, or laptop. Get in on all the football action with pre- and in-game wagering. There's showdowns every week in football that you can't miss. Plus, the college and pro hoops are red hot and the pucks are cool. Get your first casino deposit and sports wager matched up to $500 each. Terms and conditions apply. Must be 21 or older and located in Michigan. Gambling problem? Call the Michigan Problem Gambling Helpline at 1-800-270-7117. Where else can you cheer on your team, enjoy a mouth-watering burger or savory sushi, sip on handcrafted cocktails, or one of 46 beers on tap? Take your game day or date night to Cask & Company Kitchen Bar or Front 43 Neighborhood Pub near Frandor. Two amazing places with one awesome blended modern American-Asian menu. Catch the game on one of 30 60-inch TVs or stop in for the all-you-can-eat lunch buffet. Enjoy happy hour or elevate your night out at Cask & Company or Front 43 on East Saginaw in Lansing. Ever wonder how comfortable you can be and how good you can look? Put on a Muskox flannel and find out. Muskox has new arrivals for this fall, including the Caper Green Grand Flannel, which even makes couch look good. Muskox is a Detroit-based flannel company that creates soft and durable flannels made to last a lifetime. They become a great partner with Couch in the Rube, not just because they make us look good and feel good, but because they're good people too and a socially conscious company. For every $100 purchase, $10 is donated to the Alaska Wildlife Conservation. Muskox flannels are designed with 100% cotton that is ethically sourced and double brushed for softness. Feel the quality and comfort of a Muskox flannel by ordering at GoMuskox.com, where Couch in the Rube listeners can enjoy $15 off their flannel purchase with the promo code HAW. Christmas is almost here, and jewelry is for sure on your list. But where will you go for that very special gift? I'm Katrine Medawar, and we at Medawar Jewelers' four locations in Lansing, Okemos, Jackson, and Portage have filled our stores with gorgeous pieces of jewelry just in time for the holiday season. Diamond rings, diamond necklaces, bracelets, earrings, watches. We have a huge selection of the latest designs of engagement rings. And if you want your ring custom designed, then we do it all in-house, exquisitely created by our master jeweler. If a lab-created diamond is on your mind, then come in today and we'll show you the largest selection of the highest quality lab diamonds in mid-Michigan. So, what to buy this Christmas? Come to Madawar Jewelers. We have you covered. Madawar Jewelers. Come enjoy irresistible, award-winning, handcrafted donuts and locally roasted coffee at Groovy Donuts. Surprise your family or coworkers with special holiday designs and flavors, or put the perfect finishing touch on an event with a custom order. Birthdays, weddings, gender reveals, our friends at Groovy Donuts are your answer. Experience the Groovy Donuts difference for yourself on Lake Lansing Road in East Lansing or in Williamston. Get more information or place an order at GroovyDonuts.com. If you're looking for a relaxed vibe, great food, and an outstanding beer selection, Midtown Brewing Company in downtown Lansing is your place. Enjoy their famed chicken and waffle fries, fish and chips, or any of their delicious burgers or salads. Midtown Brewing Company also offers 40 plus beers on tap, including ciders and seasonal offerings and daily happy hour specials. The spacious and cozy vibe makes Midtown Brewing Company a perfect place for a beer with a friend, a work lunch, or to watch the games on its big screen TVs. If you'd rather eat at home, Midtown Brewing Company offers a terrific carryout menu and free delivery on orders of $20 or more. Visit MidtownBrewingCompany.net or stop by 402 South Washington in downtown Lansing for the Midtown Brewing Company experience. Hey, sports fans, are you tired of the same old routine? Looking for a way to unwind after a long day? Look no further than Pure Options, the premier destination for all of your cannabis needs in Lansing, Detroit, Muskegon, and Mount Pleasant. Whether you're cheering for the Lions, Spartans, or the Wolverines, Pure Options has everything you need to elevate your game day experience. And here's the best part. Mention Couch in the Rube when you visit Pure Options and get a free GoPro 8 with a $50 purchase. It's our way of saying thank you for being a loyal listener. Swing by Pure Options today and elevate your cannabis experience to a whole new level. 
Find Couch in the Rude podcasts on Spreaker, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, Google Podcasts, CastBox, and the Rube's favorite, Podcast Addict. Couch in the Rue, presented by Pure Options, Precision Crafted Cannabis, and our Wednesday afternoon show brought to you by Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com and use the promo code RUBE for 20% off uh, uh, free shipping and uh, any order. And also our Wednesday afternoon show brought to you by Front 43 Neighborhood Pub and Cask and Company Kitchen and Bar. A uh, little change of plans. It planned to have Rick Carter on. He got thrown into a meeting last second, and the man who saves us, with his uh, with his wisdom and timing and, and just love for the show, uh, the great Sean Windsor from the Detroit Free Press available to talk to us and talk some MSU hoops. Sean, how you doing, brother? Not too bad, man. Thanks for uh, having me on. It's nice to know that I'm a backup. You know that that's uh, is that my punishment because I want the listeners to know that you texted me a month ago with the great Joe Retro and basically told Joe I don't cover Michigan State anymore. <laughs> and so I, I'm wondering if this is uh, is this, if this is the punishment because I. I usually would have been on by now. Uh, we're a little late this season, right? I mean, this is probably as late as it's ever been. Yeah, this is yeah, no doubt. No, there was no punishment. You were just on this. You were covering this great Lions run, right? And so there was there was just there were bigger things than MSU basketball. That that's all it was. Um, but yeah, no, I do apologize. There's no excuse, but it is nice to have. You know, it's 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 like the the when the uh, when, when the headliner doesn't show up in a, for a comedian. There's somebody who's in house who's who's tremendous. That's that's a real. I mean, that there's value in that, Sean. There really is value I, I in don't that. Mi- I don't mind being in your bullpen. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to do it. And uh, the timing worked out well. I'm just. Uh, I was just about to go get something to eat here in Minneapolis, one of my favorite spots. I just found out closed. Unfortunately, Graham probably a COVID. Uh, probably didn't make it through COVID. It's an old, great old diner called Mickey's Diner in downtown St. Paul. It's a breakfast place. And, and an old train car, you know the you know the old school diners, and uh, so that bummed me out a little bit. So I'm going to go get some Ukrainian sausages. I thought you might like that. My, this is what I was worried about missing. Like my only fear of not being able to get a hold of you was that you had found the type of lunch spot, and you would just be, you know, have six or seven dishes in front of you and having a taste of all of them and, no, and all that you stuff. No, got, you got you got me just in time. I'm just sitting in my car, getting ready to leave the parking deck to head to Karmarchik, which is a Eastern European is an old school place to make their own sausages and cabbage rolls. That can, your kind of stuff, you know, noodles, pierogies. It's right up your alley. Very on brand. No, I look forward to gaining 12, 13 pounds uh, th- this month uh, hanging out with you. And uh, the longer MSU's run goes, the fatter I'll get. Uh, the thing people have to understand about Sean, Jason, is like on the like Sean has great discipline. So we'll be at a, a restaurant and he'll order, you know, two or three desserts just because he wants a taste. And he can have just a taste. And then he just pushes the rest in front of me, and Raccoon Graham comes out, and I just dive in, and, you know, then my uh, my blood work's all fucked up, and I'm 15 pounds heavier. But uh, nonetheless, it's, it's usually worth the meal. Cause it, well, I missed you last night because I was at the, there's a great Vietnamese kind of Malaysian street food place here called Hai Hai. And uh, we'll see if I can take you there. I don't know if our buddy Chris Solari would like it, but but I had to have a dessert by myself and I was not happy you were not in town last night because I didn't eat all of it. You'll be proud, but I did eat more than I normally would. So thanks a lot for abandoning me. Yeah, I, I will be there. I will be there uh, later tonight. Um, and while you're watching the, the Michigan basketball team in, in their game, uh, you, you wrote on uh, MSU and Michigan in today's Detroit free press, uh, Michigan and MSU basketball used to rule the big 10 tourney. Now they have something to prove it. It doesn't feel it feels like yesterday, and also it feels like a decade ago, that Michigan and Michigan State were like the the kings of this event and the and atop the conference. And their rivalry, when it would have ended the regular season, was, was great. And when they played again in the Big Ten tourney, it was an event. And that just happened for so long, uh, and it, we're just so far removed from that. And even though Michigan State's fault, I mean, a lot of that's Michigan's fault right now, being at the very bottom of the league, playing on a playing on a Wednesday. But it is amazing how quickly those programs have, have shifted from that sort of uh, Camelot era that wasn't very long ago. No, it's true. And and, and, I, and I knew, because you, you and I both lived through it, and we were at most of those tournaments. But when you go back and you look at the numbers and you realize, and you kind of know this when you see it, and you haven't looked in a while, and you see that they won six Big Ten tournament titles between them yeah. in, a nine, in a nine-year period, like that's, that's, 
dynastic between the two of them, right? I mean, six out of nine is not bad. And, and the real question is, can they can they get those back? Like, I think Michigan has more uh, existential questions, right? It's, it's do you have the right coach? Do you have the NIL set up in this era? Do you have the um, – do you have the ability with the transfer portal with your admissions to make certain things happen? Like, I think there are bigger long-term questions with Michigan. So let's start there. It is like they have some things to answer after this season and going forward about whether they can ever be that program in this year. Correct? No, absolutely. You know, it's funny. I was talking with uh, our beat writer for the Detroit Free Press, Tony Garcia, a few weeks ago about this. If, if, Caleb uh, Love. Why do I always want to say Caleb Williams? Is, is it because of the quarterback? Yes. Yep. The draft coming up. And if Caleb Love, if you of him had let him come, and he comes, does Hunter Dickinson transfer? Now, maybe you could say, well, Dickinson's not transfer anyway because of the NIL. It's just Kansas just simply had more money. But if Howard could have gotten a couple of the guys he wanted and then Dickinson stays, you're talking about a team that was probably competing for the Big Ten title. So it's you're right in terms of the structure of that place. And I wrote, I wrote about this just a little bit. I just kind of, as a one-off in a column today, but when they played Nebraska in their final home season game, final regular season game, which happened to be a home game at Chrysler last weekend, there was nobody there. And that's not super unusual when there's a down year for Michigan basketball, but I mean, there was nobody there and Nebraska beat them by 20 plus or whatever it was. And the last time I'd been in the stadium or the arena, excuse me, was, what a week or two before they played Purdue and Purdue took over. Purdue actually had more fans there than Michigan state did the week before, or two weeks before. And that's, that's kind of crazy, but you wonder, and I, and I mentioned this Graham, you wonder if the lack of the, the fact that it's not a great basketball fan base and there's, they're not a loyal fan base. Like the Breslin is full of angry people right now. Chrysler center is not. And I wonder if that gives Juwan Howard cover in a weird way. The fact that nobody's there and people don't care enough. You know what I mean? And it might give Ward Manuel an excuse because I think Ward Manuel wants to bring him back another year. Yeah, when he just, you know, you just win a football national title and that's where people's heads are. And, and look, if that happened at Michigan State, people's heads would be there too. But in Michigan, that just, the, the football basketball dynamic swings so much harder toward football. And so when, you, when you're, I don't think people like Ward Manuel. I don't think they're happy with Jawan Howard. But I think as long as football is what it is right now, they can they can sort of suffer through that, the rest of it. They're, they're, they're okay with it. For a little bit, right? Yeah. Like, if they bring him back, a lot of the fan base is not going to be happy for sure. There's a chunk of it, probably a big chunk of it, that wants him out. But I think if he gets one more year, you know, they'll they'll see. The, the problem is they might be worse next year. And here's the, here's the thing that Michigan's got to figure out. The war mail's got to decide. I mean, you're bringing him back because you don't like to fire people, or you're bringing him back because he – because he can actually do the job. You know, I, I hear behind the scenes that he does a lot of things well. He's lo- he, like, he is a basketball geek, Howard is. He's a, he loves practice. He loves developing guys. He loves the film room. And I like that about Howard. I, I like, too, because it, it busts the stereotype. It's mostly gone, but still sort of out there sometimes that if you're a black coach, your strength is recruiting and player relations and all that, and not necessarily breaking film down and strategy. And, and that's changing for the better, which is good. But Howard, um, the the best, the things that make Howard the best part of his coaching acumen, if you want to say that, is the basketball stuff. Where he has really struggled, Graham, from what I've been told, it's not just the roster construction and the program building at this level, at the college level, and the NIL is obviously an issue, but it's just the structure of the day to day life in a college basketball program. What he does on the road, the the, the way the team sometimes eats. Are they together? Are they allowed to bring in their own? You know, are they door dash and whatever? All these little things that are a pain to Beeline, that John Beeline was maybe too far the other way, although it worked, right? So they went from a micromanager to somebody who might be a little bit too loose, and he's got to – I'm not saying undisciplined, but he's got to he's got to figure that out, and Michigan has to figure that out. Is Jawan Howard the man, the right, the right fella for – that level of coaching and for building a program and all that entails things that is so good at, right? That's, um, that's, that's what they got to figure out. Yeah. And, and one of the things Haller once, Alan Haller, the Michigan state AD told me once, and, and I think this had to do, you know, when he was starting to evaluate Susie merchant and all that was just, you know, he looks at programs on the trajectory, right? Are they going up? Are they going down? Are they staying the same? 
And with some programs, staying the same is okay. Are they on the? Are, but if they're headed in the wrong direction, you know, and, and you, you don't see like the, the culture of the program is great, the kids don't seem happy, and you don't seem to be winning, then you got to make a move, you know, unless you think that's going to turn. And so, that, I mean, that to me, that's the question. Unless you think, if you don't think Juwan Howard's the answer long term, it's not just to give him another year. It's like if once you make that decision, you you've got to move on. That's the smart thing to do. And I, I don't know the answer to that because I thought he was really good early on. I know he had some of Beeline's guys, but some of them were his. He's had the heart issue now. You know, he's had some stuff where he's his own discipline with it. I, I, I think the, the lack of accountability with his own kids, especially with, with Jet, was just a killer for him. I think that the whole program turned on that. And if he had never had, if his kids weren't players and they weren't part of the program, I think things would be very different. But then the idea that, you know, Michigan State's got guys making quite a bit more, multiple times more than Hunter Dickinson could get at Michigan with NIL is a big problem too. And if you're going to compete really in, in, in the, the new marketplace, I, I think that's um, that's something they're going to have to figure out because they have it set up in football in, in, in football fine. Uh, they just don't seem to have it figured out in, in, in hoops. No, and that's the question. Do they have the benefactors? Uh, maybe that's not the right With well, the alumni, right? Yeah. To do what the Michigan State alumni, and I think we know who those are, alum, those are Michigan State, but – yeah, the alumni in Michigan. What are they going to care about most? Football. Yeah, I mean, right, and 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 rightly so. It's one of it's one of the handful of great brands. I know it's hard. Michigan State fans may not like that, but they know it's true, right? It's one of the great football brands in the country. It, it just it just is, and yeah. that's what their alumni care about. It. No, so well, let's talk Michigan State here. Um, you know, Izzo to me has been a little a little defensive. Uh, but he can get that way, especially after a loss. And then he'll have moments at press conferences where he's really good. Um, and uh, I think he's feeling it. I think he's aware of the fact that the program is not where he, you know, the standard he set for it, that it's been four years. Um, but I think he also is at a point with this particular team right now that there's not a lot he can do about it. I do think, just from people I've talked to, like I, and going back and on, on sort of the things he said last April and then what this – coaching staff thought last summer when they were watching these guys play, and I'm not talking about watching at Moneyball, I'm talking watching these guys play at practice, they really thought they had it. They thought they had a team that was going to work. They thought they had, um, I think they thought they had a little more with Booker out of the gate. I thought they think they had thought they had some stuff with Kohler and Booker together maybe, and, and, and Jackson Kohler got hurt. They, they just thought they had an interesting mix and they were going to play a little differently. Who knows whether that was real or not and how much just miscalculating where Booker was and – and then Kohler's injury really, really mattered because there are certain big guys these guys just can't defend yet. Um, but I think they believed they had something. They clearly don't. And when I listen to Izzo now, I think he understands that he's going to have to adjust a little bit, and I'll be very curious to see everything that happens this offseason. His coaching staff, um, you know, how, if, if everybody is coming back, um, his, uh, you know, how many guys on his roster choose to stay, um, and then who they bring in. I think this is going to be a fascinating offseason uh, f- for him and sort of uh, a conversation, an existential conversation he's got to have with himself about what he wants this program to be in his final years. No question. And and I, I wrote that today a little bit. That yeah. This offseason is going to affect, you would think, how the legacy of his, the last bit here, right? I mean, that's that's really what's at stake. Right, because if you start with the, I mean, look, and you you've written about this, you've done some really good work, you always do, but it's the the, the idea that Izzo goes and that is somehow going to pick up. It, it look the pro, he's the program, it's him. Yeah, it right, it it, it really is, and then you got to get lucky with whoever comes in behind him. Maybe maybe they're just as good, maybe they're better. That's hard to imagine, based on. You know what Michigan State is still. Um, are they a blue blood, Graham? Let's start with that. I had this argument with somebody the other day. They, they are they are, they are not a blue blood until to me. I mean, there are lots of ways to define blue blood. Sort of the noble birth, you can say that they're not right. But UCLA is a blue blood, but UCLA doesn't have any fans. So are they really a blue blood? I mean, that there's lots of questions like that. However, to me, with Michigan State, what makes a blue blood even to have that conversation? How they're perceived is when you can do it with a second coach. It cannot be a one-coach program and be a blue blood. He's created some tentacles of a blue blood, you know. Um, and but to to really 
uh, sustain it. I, I think I think you know they are the blue blood of Mich- uh, the, in terms of how they're treated right now in the Big Ten. In terms of, and that's what people have to understand about um, about. I mean, if they go out and get be it Drew Valentine or any young coach, or they'll go get a good coach after the, after Tom Izzo because Michigan State is a brand that he's built. People want that. They'll have money to do it. But there are no guarantees. There are no guarantees that it'll have the cachet that it does now. There are no guarantees that it'll have the complete NIL support that it does unwavering from uh, you know a couple billionaires uh, that allow them to spend what they need to spend to compete and will continue to do so. I mean, what you really want if you're an MSU fan is you just want – Izzo to do what it takes to win and continue to evolve as need be with, and then with what he can stomach, um, but still be the coach for a while because I, they're just, they're, they're so much likely, so much more likely to fall off without him than they are with him, I think. No, yeah, you, you want him to, you want him to adapt and adjust again. And, and I use the word again intentionally because I think that gets lost sometimes, you know, I see, and look, and I know social media, it's hard to have a lot of nuance and, context and so on and so forth but the, but one of the hallmarks of his program has been adapting and adjusting and also been developing players right and and that hasn't happened quite as much lately although i still think i mean tyson walker's better than who he was when he got there malik halls you know he didn't play well against indiana or whatever but he's this is the best ball he's playing now, partly that's been injuries that have held him back i think i think what hurts right now but real quickly just stand on the macro he has a resume a long long resume I'm talking about his o of adapting and adjusting how he puts the roster together the kind of sets he runs you know you and i love to joke about hey he should have put the ball in cash and winston's hand when he was a sophomore instead of a junior but when winston was a junior and a senior and i know that senior year was a little more difficult because of the personal tragedy with with winston and his brother but that those teams the way they ran all those high ball screens and the way Winston had the ball in his hands and the, the way, not just those teams, we go back to the Valentine teams, uh, obviously that Brent Forbes and so forth, but those were great shooting teams. And back in the earlier parts of the 2000s, you never thought of Michigan State. as I mean, you thought of them as teams that got out like the transition, but you didn't think of them as like great shooting teams. He had some of the best shooting teams in the, in the history of the Big Ten, right, through, the, through some of those years. That to me is an adjustment and adapt, and 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 it's adaptation. That's what he's he's going to have to do that again, and take a long look. I think he's capable. I think that's your better bet is betting that he can do what he has shown he's done, he is, you know, shown he's done before. That he can do that again. To me, that's that's the best bet. I get it. It's tough right now because you look at why isn't Jay Nakin better, you know, right? Why is Hogard still not consistent? That's what they banked on, Graham. You, you wrote about this. You're right. The five-man has been an issue. I think they thought Cooper would be a little bit better. That has not happened. And uh, you're, you, you mentioned Booker. Kohler's injury hurt. But the fact is, you and I watched, look, Joey Hauser was a big part of that run. But we also watched really, really, really good guard play down the stretch in the tournament last year. And that's just not been consistent this year. To me, that's the thing they were banking on the most that has not happened. And I understand that's frustrating for fans to say, okay, why isn't Akins better? Why is Hogarth still like this, right? I mean, Walker is a little different because he got hurt. But I mean, what, what do you what do you think about that? Well, I, th- I think there are times where you you do get to a point where well, I, I, early on I thought Hogard was looking over his shoulder at Jeremy Fears Jr. and they had sort of figured that out, and then uh, and then Fears got shot and w- was out, and and I do think for th- that it did help him for a while though once he started playing well with Fears that to. N- to not have it just be his world, like he did have to play well to to maintain that spot. I I do think the Tyson Walker injury has been a bigger deal because last year they were able to use him at the one at times when when Hogard was struggling. Um, but Hogard has been, you know, I mean, he's been really up and down. And sometimes the the problem with 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 guys who aren't like pros, like AJ Hogard is a, an overseas pro, but you know they can't just dominate a game at will. They can play up. But they can't dominate a game at will, and I think Hogard wants to be able to do that. He doesn't have the shot, doesn't have the complete game for it, and so he has limitations. And I think he's just sort of reached who he is at the college level. And I don't know whether it's in terms of putting in the work or whatever, but maybe that you know, the, I think there are some development stuff that's fair to criticize the big man stuff. And um, you know, it's been two years since they lost Dwayne Stevens. That is not 
gone great in terms of the development there and the, no, it's not. And, and and you know what, what's the type of work they really do there and and and, and to work on those guys and he, and he's got to look at that and that that is Doug Wojcik's job and so you know Izzo's got to also I think have I think what people fear also is the D'Antonio finish where he was loyal to people and didn't make changes where it was necessary and they fear that Izzo will do the same thing and so I think there are you know there are things within his own staff he's got to look at because I, I, from my understanding, they have not been all on the same page too in terms of how to use the big men all year, and so that is something um, that you know, and that's fine. I, people don't have to always agree, uh, and and ultimately it comes down to Izzo's decision, and, and the buck stops with him. But I, I think the backcourt is a, a huge part of things. But I also think that if they had better play at the five, more consistent, that some of those guys would look a lot better. That Hogard would look a lot better. That that Aikens would look a lot better. I think those guys have struggled, and the fact that at the last game of the season, the guy, the center who started twenty six games for you, played six minutes, and it took you that long to sort of realize what he can and can't do. Period, is a little bit of a problem. Like I, you know, I, I mean, I'm a little more down on Mati Sissoko as a player than some other people, but I would not have been starting him this long. I, I think he had sort of reached who he was going to be at this point for, you know, better or worse. And, and the other guys had more upside to give and, and working on them would have been the way to go. I would have ridden Jackson Kohler a little longer and, and just given him more of a green light and seen if by chance they could have helped him get the confidence back to work to who he was last summer. I would have, uh, you know, see what happens with, with Carson Cooper. I do think shows some, some flashes here and there. Um, and then obviously Booker, uh, you know, we all saw Booker wasn't close to ready in December and January, so it's a hard situation with him. But certainly, as quickly as you could have got him in there, I, I would have I would have done that, and I, I think they did to some degree. But um, I, it, it's a it's a tricky situation because they got one pro on the roster, and it's Xavier Booker, and he was the least ready guy to play. So no, yeah, it's hard. It's, it's a chicken. It's kind of a chicken or an egg, right? You're right. A five man will help the guards, but if if Aikens had his shot, I mean, a- the Aikens has had some stretches here lately where he just looks. He doesn't look confident, right? Yeah. And and that's and that's that's a problem. And that's not a criticism of him. Any athlete goes through that. Athletes go through that. And he just but if he's making shots and attacking, look, his ball skill isn't quite where he probably hoped it would be, maybe the coaching staff hoped it would be, and that's fine, but he can still make shots and attack and defend and rebound. And if he were doing that, then that makes the five spot look better. So there is a bit of a chicken or an egg thing, but you're, I, I agree with you on the five spot overall. The Indiana game is a perfect example. They don't need a back of the basket star. They don't even have to have Tillman if you have perimeter play that you think you're going to get. If Walker's healthy, if Aikens is. The, but what you do have to have, to me, is at the end of a game when your big man gets a rebound in traffic, a pretty good rebound, not not a man's rebound, but still the, the ball came to him a little bit. But when your big man gets a rebound. And you have no hope of going back up and getting it in, or hitting two free throws if you get fouled. That's a problem. Yeah, you got you got to have that at least that level. You've got to have a big man that can make that play, right? A, a putback. So let me ask you this: Let's take it to the to the micro to this year. And Izzo keeps saying the line of this might be a group that can make a run. And I don't know if that's just reflex based on because it usually is this time of year. What what? What, what he says and, and often is what's happened. This week, you know, I don't, I, I don't know what to degree it matters. I think it would help them if they beat Minnesota, perhaps, although it may put them on the 8-9 line, and which, which could hurt them. But when, when they get to next week, wherever we are, is this a team that has the goods to, to beat a one seed in the second round to make some noise and to, to keep moving on? I don't think, unless they have some kind of, you know, it's funny, he was joking the other day about wanting to sweat in practice because he wanted to sweat the regular season out of him, like a, like an exorcism, you know, a sage burning or whatever. I don't, I actually think they have the players. If Aikens, if Walker's going to be what he showed at Indiana, if he's finally started to be himself again, and Aikens can find himself, and he doesn't need to be star, a star, just, you know, score, go out and score 14, hit a few shots, and defend. 
and rebound. If, if those two guys can play well in the same game, Hogarth doesn't need to make shots necessarily. Just finish a few more laps maybe, score eight, ten points, whatever, and distribute, not turn the ball over. Then And Hall can be who he's mostly been. Then, yeah, but what I don't know that they have, Graham, is the mental – it's just they, they feel slightly demoralized to me, right? Yeah. That's, that's, and to me, that's almost the bigger issue. They can have a night where their guys play to their capabilities, not above them, but play to their capabilities, and they can play with anybody. I, really, I mean, they went down and played with Purdue at Purdue, more or less, right? I don't think they I, don't think, they think they're going to win close games right now. No, that, that, that's, that's yeah. right. This is, and I never want to say this about athletes. It's not that they're not tough. Of course, they're tough. It, it, to get to that level, you've got to have some toughness. They don't collectively have the kind of grit and competitive spirit. It's not that they don't play hard or try or any of that. That's not fair. I don't think the competitive spirit and confidence are there to win close games and to go into against the team, the top seed, whatever, and say, you know what, we can beat these guys and really, truly know it. And I think that's, I think that's the biggest thing for them. Sean, I appreciate you coming on. You are uh, nobody's backup in life. Um, just a beautiful man. Look forward to sharing a meal, a dessert, letting you fatten me up over the next uh, week or so. I will see you in Minneapolis shortly. Appreciate you, brother. All right, safe travels. Always happy to join you, bud. That's Sean Windsor from the Detroit Free Press. Uh, enjoyed that conversation. Um, his take on, on where MSU is. Anything that stood out for me there, Jason? Well, when you guys were talking about uh, Juwan Howard in Michigan, I just don't understand. I mean, there's not a better time to get rid of a coach. I get it. He's a Michigan guy, Jawan, but you won a national title. It You know, you finished in last place by a wide margin. Why wouldn't you just try to do something new? Is this, you know, health problems, the strength and conditioning coach, hell, even Greg Gard, if you want to keep bringing that up. But, I mean, what is – has Jawan really done anything to to earn the right to come back next year? I think it's just about the the perfect time to get a new head coach in there, maybe a young guy or something like that. But I know it's because it's a Michigan guy; you don't want to fire him. But it, it's a shit show now. Yeah, you're, you're firing part of the Fab Five, and it took long enough to bring those guys back yeah. in. But but that's right. That's but you that gave him a good a, an opportunity, and to, that's thirty years ago history right now. Right. I mean, that's just not you know that's not what you can be your. And again, you won focus. a national championship in the sport most Michigan fans care about, and that's football. So I feel if you do the move, not many fans are going to be pissed or whatever. I'd want to really, if, if I were to keep Juwan Howard, if I were the athletic director and I was still on the fence at all, I would want to hear from him a plan. And I would want to hear energy, and I would want to hear what he wanted to do and how he was going to do it. What kind and of I'd want to hear though? some mistake. Well, just in terms of roster construction, what he wants to do, and then I'd wanna, I want to hear where he... I'd want to hear him say to me, you know, I, I should have held Jet more accountable on the court. Because I don't you think. You want to hear him say that. I do. I want to hear him Ward say that. Ward Manuel doesn't care. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's Ward's problem. Then I, then I should be the AD at Michigan because, um, you know, I can, I, can, I can make the right decision with a basketball coach and I can also cover up a scandal. So I could, I could be the AD. It's there. A hard I gig, could do man. it. Yeah. I could do it. I could do it pretty well. Um, it, it's going to be a, it's going to be an interesting. Michigan plays Wednesday night. And I, I think it'll be a short stay in Minneapolis, and then that's the season. It'll be interesting to see what happens quickly after that. Um, Michigan State, obviously, Wednesday at noon on, on BTN. Is, is there money to be made in the Big Ten tournament at all? If you, I what think, you just said, I mean, I, is Michigan even going to give a shit? Yeah, I, I think the the real question is knowing knowing who's motivated, and everybody's talking about the bottom of the bracket. I, I do wonder what Purdue's motivation is like does Purdue really want to play three games in three days right like what Purdue whatever Purdue does in this tournament I do not hold against them I'm not going to judge them at all I I just want I've seen teams like them say you know we're not turning that ankle we're not screwing this up we got big things starting next week that's what everybody's looking at we already won the Big Ten let's get out of here and so it, Nebraska plus 700 to win it all, Illinois is the team. What are they? Plus three hundred on the yeah. Firekeepers. I casino sportsbook app around there. I, yep. I Illinois, I think, will be motivated to to do something here. Um, there's I, no value in that, though. No, nah, there's not a ton. There's really not. I, you know, I per, mean, Michigan State ten to one. If you think that they're going to get their head out, head out of their ass, Purdue's to... Purdue's like even money, and they're the best team by a ways. Right. So that that's not a bad play either. Uh, there are probably better odds in, in other tournaments out there. Teams like Texas and you know and, and the Big Twelve and th- teams that are got long odds that and Painter doesn't want to lose to another sixteen seed. So yeah, if you're oh. looking if you're looking for a place to camp out, 
uh, I'm, I'm telling you, from 43 and Casking Company, watch hoops game after game after game in the Big Ten tournament. Watch tonight's games. Watch uh, Thursday's games starting in Michigan State. Enjoy lunch. Enjoy the happy hour specials. All that great stuff at Front 43 and Cask and Company. Go to caskandcompany.com to check out their menu um, and also their uh, outstanding standing drink selection. Just a great setup. One set is more of a uh, restaurant but with uh, really cool TVs, and I love the way their bar is. It's not a circular bar, but it's kind of a, uh, a U-shaped bar on, on the Cask and Company side. And the TV setup on Front 43 is as good as it gets. Um, just really fantastic place. Give them a shot. Uh, we'll take a quick break. We come back. Um, we will dig into uh, – we'll just talk a little Detroit Lions, a little NFL uh, to wrap things up. Um, Couch in the Rube presented by our friends at Pure Options, Precision Crafted Cannabis. Go to pureoptions.com and uh, check out their location information throughout Michigan. And if you're in Pure Options – let them know Couch in the Room sent you. If you, spend, if you spend 50 bucks, you get a free Eight the Pro Grow, uh, an in-house brand, a fantastic quality. You'll love the vibe. You'll love the service. Uh, you'll love the – it's just it's, – it, it, this is like the high-end stuff, like the high-end experience relative to, uh, to a lot of other, uh, other cannabis companies. Uh, we'll be right back. Couch in the Room. Hey, sports fans. Are you tired of the same old routine? Looking for a way to unwind after a long day? Look no further than Pure Options, the premier destination for all of your cannabis needs in Lansing, Detroit, Muskegon, and Mount Pleasant. Whether you're cheering for the Lions, Spartans, or the Wolverines, Pure Options has everything you need to elevate your game day experience. And here's the best part. Mention Couch in the Rube when you visit Pure Options and get a free GoPro 8 with a $50 purchase. It's our way of saying thank you for being a loyal listener. Swing by Pure Options today and elevate your cannabis experience to a whole new level. Firekeeper's online casino and sportsbook is the site to play from your phone, tablet, or laptop. Get in on all the football action with pre- and in-game wagering. There's showdowns every week in football that you can't miss, plus the college and pro hoops are red hot and the pucks are cool. Get your first casino deposit and sports wager matched up to $500 each. Terms and conditions apply. Must be 21 or older and located in Michigan. Gambling problem? Call the Michigan Problem Gambling Helpline at 1-800-270-7117. Where else can you cheer on your team, enjoy a mouth-watering burger or savory sushi, sip on handcrafted cocktails, or one of 46 beers on tap? Take your game day or date night to Cask & Company Kitchen Bar or Front 43 Neighborhood Pub near Frandor. Two amazing places with one awesome blended modern American-Asian menu. Catch the game on one of 30 60-inch TVs or stop in for the all-you-can-eat lunch buffet. Enjoy happy hour or elevate your night out at Cask & Company or Front 43 on East Saginaw in Lansing. Ever wonder how comfortable you can be and how good you can look? Put on a muskox flannel and find out. Muskox has new arrivals for this fall, including the Caper Green Grand Flannel, which even makes couch look good. Muskox is a Detroit-based flannel company that creates soft and durable flannels made to last a lifetime. They become a great partner with Couch in the Room, not just because they make us look good and feel good, but because they're good people too and a socially conscious company. For every $100 purchase, $10 is donated to the Alaska Wildlife Conservation. Muskox flannels are designed with 100% cotton that is ethically sourced and double brushed for softness. Feel the quality and comfort of a muskox flannel by ordering at GoMuskox.com, where Couch in the Rube listeners can enjoy $15 off their flannel purchase with the promo code HAW. Find Couch in the Rube podcasts on Spreaker, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, Google Podcasts, CastBox, and the Rube's favorite, Podcast Addict. Couch in the Rube, presented by Pure Options Cannabis and our Wednesday show. Also presented by our friends at Manscaped. That's right, Manscaped, the uh, spring cleaning champions, of course. A little about their uh, fifth-generation trimmer. Features two interchangeable next-gen skin blade heads. Um, it also uh, dual LED spotlights to guide you through the darkest winter debris. This can be important, right? you got to navigate with confidence in your delicate areas. Hate making a mess? Do not worry. This bad boy is waterproof. Shave in the shower, in the bath, in the ocean. Um, I'm telling you, it, it, it can be, uh, it can be life-changing. Uh, for me, again, 12 pounds, just like that. Eat whatever I want now. 
But because I got Manscaped, it's it's Writing it's right up into my it's, it's the way to go. Go to painful. Go to manscaped.com, and uh, we've got a special offer for Couch and the Rube listeners. Rube, the code Rube R U B E for twenty percent off and free shipping. Jason, let's talk some lines. It's our core foundation, man. Grit. Okay. <laughs> uh, what what in, in in NFL as well? But let, let's is there a, a signing that has happened? A move that has happened? Signing or departure that has excited you or pissed you off? Um, Gardner Johnson went back to Philly and he started apologizing to Eagle fans. I'm not like super pissed off. It's fine. Uh, Glasgow re-signing him, big deal. I just think a lot of fans are like, wait a minute, and they see every all of these other transactions that are happening and signings and going like, well, why aren't the Lions trying to go out and get some of these guys? Well, that's I just don't think that's what Brad Holmes wants to do. He wants to get low risk huge upside and that's what he's done so far I mean the cornerback situation he he traded for one signed another guy from Oakland who's what five nine but I mean you know it's Brad Holmes unfortunately he gets to do whatever he wants because of the rookies that he's brought in unprecedented as far as the Lions go and maybe even in the NFL especially with a guy like Laporta putting up the numbers tight ends don't put up numbers like Laporta did in his rookie year so it's it's just kind of like sit back and wait and noticing other teams, I'm really, I'm really scared of Pittsburgh because getting Russ. I mean, Tomlin last year, look what he did without a quarterback whatsoever. That defense, they got uh, Queen from Baltimore too. That defense is going to be scary, and you get Russ for pretty much free, right? Because Denver, one of the worst uh, trades and signings of all time, Russ Wilson. But you get a guy in Russ who's willing to die. I think he's willing to die for you on the field, and Tomlin loves that. And they're going to be. I think their offense will be a lot of a lot better with Russ. I'm not a fan. I know he's a weirdo, but um but yeah, no, I just I think we're just getting into it. I think honestly, I think Holmes wants to go through the draft and, I don't and mind get it. these guys because of the contract situation yep. with those guys. He trusts his his evaluation of a lot of these guys, and so do I. And it's a it's a weird thing to say. And then, you know, the apologies to Brad for the past two years, but you have to understand we're scoring Lions fans. Now we're all buying in. So I'm not really concerned about the lack of the splashing in free agency. It's not like I wanted them to sign Saquon Barkley or anything like that. I don't understand the running backs don't have value, but then they're going to pay these guys a certain amount of money like Saquon Barkley when you can pretty much get guys for like a mil and a half, three mil or something like that. Yeah, I mean, the only reason you pay a running back is if you think they're one of the few, they're the McCaffrey, they're the game changer, well, right? Well, Barkley is, right? It, it, but can maybe, he stay healthy? Yeah. Right, right. And, and, and frankly, it's not all that much money. I mean, these guys all sign quickly because I think they know that's when the money is available. Um, but it's a lot of money con- considering the fact that people don't value the running back position like they used to. I didn't mind the Carl, uh, Carlton Davis trade. I thought that was, you know, decent veteran guy, you know. I mean, I ain't gonna lie to you. I had no idea who he was. Okay, yeah, I and I watched tape. You, I crushed you, some tape. Did he crush the tape? Yeah, crushed yeah. a little tape. I don't worry about the AFC when I'm thinking about who the Lions are competing against because the idea of getting to a Super Bowl, then you deal with that one team that's across the way, whoever it is at that sure. point. Sure. Um, the NFC, you know, Philly seems like they're building for this sort of boomer bust situation. Um, but they lost Kelsey. That's the thing, too. I mean, when you lose a center to, of his magnitude or any center whatsoever, I mean, those guys are smart, and they are pretty much the, the backup captain uh, for the offense there, and you lose a guy like Kelsey, it, they're not easy to replace. The team that I think scares me moving forward is in, in, in the division, and that's, and that's Green Bay. Um, yeah, they got Josh Jacobs. But I, I, I want to – the one thing I did think was interesting, Kirk Cousins going to the, the Falcons, and this contract is actually, I think – a pretty good because w- let's agree that Cousins is in the Jared Goff realm of like quality, right? We all agree they're in the same tier. He has one playoff win, but the same tier. Is Goff better? I would take Goff. By the way, can we sign Goff already? I'm seeing the Baker Mayfield contracts and Kirk Cousins. Like, let's just get this over with and break him off, so we don't have to. It doesn't keep rising and rising with every signing here. So there's a lot of stuff with this. It, it says four years, 180 million to Kirk Cousins, 90 million fully guaranteed. I don't know if that's I, what, what I do, what I do think is there is at least so ninety million over. I think two, basically two years is guaranteed for him. So the question is though, is a similar deal for Goff? Where what I don't hate is the idea of a four-year, hundred eighty million dollar deal where it's going well and that all plays out. But you can what, what the Falcons can do is get out of it after a couple of years, mm-hmm. and that's what I kind of want with Goff. I, you certainly earn the money, and if he continues to 
play in the like, like he has in, in the in the big games, and and they wind up in these NFC championships and, and playoffs. So it, then then fine. But, yeah, but I think it's a different story than Kirk Cousins. I'm I'm okay with giving Golf four years. We, we don't have to buy out of this because because guess what? There unless we get somebody that we draft somebody or Hooker, whoever we think is going to be the heir apparent. Well, Jared Goff is our guy. He's bought in. The fans love him. We're fucking cheering his name every at the goddamn airport. I hear Jared Goff chants. I mean, we're buying in. He's bought in. We're buying in. Here's four years. Guaranteed fucking I'm, money. Let's get it over. I'm going to do an MSU basketball comparison to tell you how dumb fans are, though. And I apologize to our listeners for saying this because I'm no smarter. But, like, I, I was, uh, you know, perusing on Twitter and some of the, the criticisms of, of the MSU players at, uh, and, and, and Izzo and all this stuff. And, and somebody had posted a thread of players you love and miss. And one of them was Matt McQuaid. Quaido. Right. Everybody loves the way that ended. They love it. I'm going to tell you, somebody covered Matt McQuaid for four years and did a number of pieces on him. And I remember sitting down with him in his junior year uh, in the in the locker room for a good, it was like a good half hour one-on-one. And I talked to Mike Garland about this. Like that man had lost a lot of confidence. Like he had underperformed. Like he was one of the most frustrating people for MSU fans in a long time. Matt Costello, frustrating player to the middle of his junior year. The, the people remember the end. And look, I'm not. Like with Michigan State now, this is the end for a lot of these guys, and so this is this is it. But I'm just saying, like sometimes we have these, uh, we get excited about something and we don't think clearly. And I think with Jared Goff, there is the question of like how many teams have really of late gone through and won a Super Bowl without having a dude at quarterback who carries you and elevates you in different ways. And again, it can happen once. You can get lucky once, but it almost takes that, and that's still my concern with him. I want to be able to get out of anything you sign him to. I want. I do not trust that it is lasting. It's long term. I hope I'm wrong. And if it is, then again, four years, 180 million sounds great. Yeah, but I want a lot of things. But the thing is, the re- uh, the reality of the quarterback situation in the NFL is you just don't have that luxury. I mean, you have you're gonna have to start breaking these guys off. And I think Goff has shown enough to at least give him four years guaranteed. I, I don't. Other than injuries, I don't know. What possibly could happen with Goff that we would regret signing him to a guaranteed four-year deal? You hit. And a, I don't even you know a ceiling. You just can't get to the Super Bowl with him. He throws three interceptions I, every time in the big game or something. I don't know. But who do you go get? I mean, like then you're in Minnesota and you're fucked and you're like, well, yeah. shit. It's we're tough. Dying for Kirk Cousins to come back. So yeah, no, I know, I know, yeah. I know. It's it's not it's not it's not simple. It's not simple. I, I mean, things gotta, could be worse. I mean, you know what I mean. We're talking about Jared Goff like he was complete ass no no i'm not yeah. and don't get me wrong i was the biggest critic of jared goff t- yeah. two years ago and he was ass some at times back then but you know you know the, you gotta do what you gotta do you know the uh the move i love the most and an aging running back who i really want to see win one derrick henry to the ravens yeah. i liked it because i just think i think they needed somebody they got away from what who they were in that playoff game and when you have derrick henry <laughs> you you don't stop running the ball you don't stop punishing people, and, and I I don't think. I mean, it's, was that an issue for Baltimore though? Or, I mean, it wasn't was the playoffs. One of your wide receivers that you you know your weapons and Mark Andrews injury, but in the playoffs they like you know they just. But I don't understand. But this isn't like a Madden franchise. I know it looks no. good on paper, but I mean, the X's and O's you go deep in is is Henry really that scary of a guy anymore? That's a good question. I'm you know, I'm just saying that because I'm a hater because I just I'm really scared of Baltimore. But, <laughs> Uh, we will talk more Lions as we get closer to the draft. Um, we appreciate all of you listening. Appreciate Sean Windsor for diving in uh, last minute and uh, the, the conversation we had there. Uh, we'll be back um, maybe Friday if they lose Thursday, maybe Saturday. If they keep winning, we'll talk to you Monday after the selection show. We'll, we'll, we'll keep you posted, obviously. Uh, we appreciate our, our, our friends at um, Front 43 and Casking Company uh, just north of Frandor and East Saginaw Lansing. Great place to watch hoops. This weekend, any weekend during the NCAA tournament, noon game, great place to go. We obviously appreciate Manscaped and uh, for all they do for us, for all they do for the significant others in our lives who now uh, have less of a terrible experience when dealing with this. Therese can attest to this. Uh, Go to manscaped.com, promo code RUBE. We appreciate Pure Options, of course, our presenting sponsor. Every show presented by Pure Options. Good show, man. Yeah, man. Couch in the room. 